Howdy, Yokes. Before we get started today, I want to let you know that this episode of Bacon and Eggs is brought to you by these wicked muscles, baby. Look at how strong the boy is. What are you talking about? Whoa, he's so strong. Um, this episode of Bacon and Eggs is brought to you by the U.S. Men's National Soccer Team. This episode uh, of Bacon if, and as, Eggs. As the crow flies, we were playing England tomorrow. Oh, really? Well, no, we're playing Friday. But oh, I see. as the episode comes out, we're playing tomorrow. So if you're watching this any time other than Thanksgiving 2000, American Thanksgiving 2022, uh, we don't play England tomorrow at soccer. Probably. Probably. There will be a time when that is true, when that is true again. And and in every case that these things happen, because I've been, I've been close on some things before where they've been like, oh, if you're, where I'm like, oh, if you're listening to this, you know, January 14th, 2022. I said that in like 2019 mm -hmm. and somebody was like, yeah, hi, it's me. It's me. I am watching the matrix <laughs> so if right now. If you're listening to this episode on a day where us plays England at soccer tomorrow, find me on the internet somewhere. I don't know if Twitter still exists by then. I don't know if Twitter's still going to exist by Friday, yeah, but it might not. It might not, but find me on the internet somewhere and let me know. Anyway, this episode brought to you by the U S men's national team. I believe that we will win. This episode also brought to you by Patreon, patreon.com slash bacon and eggs. You can support the show and pay for Ethan and I's Disney Plus subscription. Mm. We do need to renew that. We need to renew that. It does not work anymore. It's been three years. Yep. Turns out. On with the show. Howdy, Yokes, and welcome back to Bacon and Eggs. I'm Tyler Carlin. And I'm Ethan Edge Hill. And today we're suiting up. Or maybe we're just grieving our brother. So... 3D print a fruit and find an ancient Mayan civilization. Because today we're bringing you Black Panther, Hulu, and Wakanda Forever. I don't think we're supposed to do that. I, I, yeah, I figured that out like halfway through yeah. and just kind of like stopped. I have a question. I'm just kind of autopiloting there. I have a question for you. Okay. For one thing, this episode we're going to record for 60 minutes. We didn't talk about that beforehand, but that's what we're doing. Yeah. Or until the camera or battery until dies. The camera battery dies. Also, you listener, love viewer, I only brought one camera battery with me accidentally. The other one's still on the charger at home. So if the video cuts out and we keep talking, it's because the camera's dead. That's exactly and right. And you, camera, I'm looking at you. Don't die. Don't die. Cool. You have 57 minutes to survive. Um, you're wearing a hoodie. Nope. You're wearing a t-shirt and a beanie right now. I'm wearing a soccer jersey. I, okay. But it's in, in essence a t-shirt. Yes. Do you get hot? Does your head not get hot? It does. Yeah. Okay. So like when people wear beanies in Florida and stuff, they're just like dealing with yeah, being hot. They're just hot. dealing with being hot. I think that's the dumbest thing I've it's, ever it's, heard. Hey, Tyler's like wearing a suit. No. You know how, you know how like in the summer you have to, if you have to wear a suit, it's hot. Not that bad. Not as bad as wearing a wool beanie. I don't think you know what most suits are made of. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Um, because um, <laughs> yes, it is. No, suits are breathable. No, they're not. <laughs> oh, mine are. <laughs> this beanie is really not that bad. I promise. Yes, it does get warm sometimes. Um, but also it's winter. It's cold outside. It is cold outside. So, I have noticed that when I walk from my car to my work or from my work to my car, from my house to my car, from my car to my house, it is cold outside. I purchased this beanie because it was on sale. Nice. So I was buying this Chris Peels jersey at, from Dick's Sporting Goods, um, and I bought this beanie. I don't usually go to Dick's Sporting Goods for any reason. I, I, uh, it's the only, believe it or not, it's the only store in Roanoke that sells U.S. men's national team jerseys on a Sunday afternoon. I did know that. Um, that I can pick up to wear to work the next day for a game we tied against Wales. Fuck you, Gareth Bale. We're going to FedEx Field this weekend. So I heard. Wakanda forever. Yeah. Uh, sorry, we got to side there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, Tyler, um, this movie got an 84% on Rotten Tomatoes and a 95% audience rating on Rotten Tomatoes. What I, I don't I'm like I'm not I don't need you to give me a one out of a hundred unless you want to, but like wh where does this rank for you? Not rank. How would you feel about the movie? I don't think I can give it a one out of a hundred on a traditional scale because it it really 
so much exists as a sequel, which I don't feel like there's a ton of, you know what I mean? It's an like, interesting one for sure. Uh, I will say this. I do think what you can do is compare it to the first one in terms of overall quality. And I would say that if the first is a 100, this is probably an 85. I think that's, if you compare it to the first one, I think that's generous. Really? Yeah. I, well, cause like <laughs> this movie has a lot of crap in it. That's just bad. Like, like I, I understand that we needed greater implications for the Marvel cinematic universe. And like, this is the end of phase four and ant man's the beginning of phase five. Cause the phases still matter. But like, there's no reason for Everett Ross to be in this movie. There's no reason for Valentina to be in this movie. There's no real reason for Riri Williams to be in this movie or at just pick one of the three. There's too many side plots going on. Uh, so the Riri that, Williams it, it, thing, the movie is paced badly because of that. It, it's almost three hours long, which is ridiculous. And it just like it, it, it always feels jarring. I'll say this about the, the so run time. As far as overall actually, quality that, that hurts it. That didn't bother me so much. I thought Everett Ross is like in my mind, if this were a TV show, giving me more updates on Everett Ross that don't really impact the rest of the story isn't a big deal because I know down the line it's going to matter. I understand that that's the same thing with Riri and with um, Valentina, but it's not because Everett Ross was in the first one. Like he yes. is already an established character in in this universe. In this universe, yes. In this Black Panther but universe. He adds nothing to the movie. Like, it, you know how they talk about like oh, Indiana Jones would have happened exactly the same without Indiana Jones in it. Yeah. Like the dude still would have opened the box and they, and they would have exploded. Right. This movie happens without Everett Ross. Yes. But I think if, I mean, Marvel calling up Martin Freeman and putting him in another movie. It's fine. It's fine. Keep him. If you want to put, if you want to put Martin Freeman in this, if you want to put uh Julia Redreifus in this fine, if you want to put Ree Williams in this fine, pick one. Because because they didn't give enough to the to the Mar to the Everett and Val story, they also didn't give enough to Riri Williams. I agree with you there, and I I Riri Williams. I remember she shows up at like the final fight, and I was like, "You don't belong here. Yeah, you're not nearly trained enough. You have no business being here. You are like a. I mean, this is like. And again, I want to make it clear that I'm not I'm not saying anything about the character or that like Ironheart shouldn't exist or shouldn't be in movies, like. I just, they didn't give us enough of the character in this movie to justify her continuing to be there for the rest of the movie. Correct. And it was know, weird man. that they like plopped in the entirety of Iron Man one in the middle, in of the middle movie. of the, I, you know, and that's the other thing I was going to come back to is the like fast and the furious, like, you know, putting the heist together montages where they play like weird Latin pop music that didn't work fundamentally didn't work in this. Yeah. Fundamentally didn't work. No music cue should be jarring. And there were plenty of music soundtrack pieces in this movie that were jarring. You, you seem to, did you like this movie? I love this movie. Okay, yeah. cool, cool, cool. But you said it, you said 85 and I had to refute that. I think, okay. If you're talking, I'm sorry. If you're talking about quality compared to the original, if you have a movie that doesn't have uh weird, music to use and a music movie that doesn't have Valentina. It doesn't have Eric Ross and a movie that, that maybe includes Ray Williams, maybe doesn't. I think you have a movie that scores much closer to the original black Panther. That was the point I was here. Making. I guess here's the way I see it is you can take the way, the way I would score it is you started at 100 and you take points away and then you add points. Okay. So you take points away for like, ah, Riri Williams wasn't really de developed enough. Uh, Julia Louis Dreyfus. I feel like if I didn't watch the TV shows, I wouldn't really know what she's doing here. She was in like a post credit scene for Black Widow. That was like two years ago. I don't remember that at all. Uh, yeah. It, like what is, what's going on here? Uh, you know, you take that away and you peel back almost down to like a 70, 65, but then you flip that around and you're like, Lupita Nyong'o was literally everything I could have ever wanted. That's another 10 points right there. That's you know, tens a lot for just somebody being there. Uh, M'Baku character development. Huge. Yeah. Love that. Maybe five points for that. Also the new black Panther in Letitia, Wright. That's her name, right? Yeah. Letitia, Wright As a Shuri. 
Oh, obsessed with that. The fact that she saw, oh, Killmonger's in this. Yeah. You're gnarly. Five points no, right there. That's a, that's a minus. You think Killmonger's a minus? Bring him back to life. Bring him back to life. Let him be Black Panther. Oh, disagree. Do anything other than have him be in a flashback. That was just cheap. It wasn't a flashback. Okay. Not a, sorry. Not a flashback. The Astro plane. Whatever. He doesn't even really exist. Uh, so you don't believe the Panther plane exists. What's it called? The astral plane. The astral plane. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, it exists, but like, I do think we're going to get into a weird, uh, problem recent er, eventually where like all of these afterlifes are true. What about the rest of them? And that's just like a, a, a bridge. I don't want them to cross. Captain America teams up with Jesus. <laughs> yeah, that's, that is a, that is a, a box we can leave shut. Um, I do think we're going to get into an interesting conversation about, uh, um, can you freaking imagine if they were like Captain America teams up with the prophet Muhammad, <laughs> we depicted the prophet Muhammad in the MCU. Uh, that would be hugely problematic, hugely, hugely bad. problematic. Um, it is going to be an interesting conversation though, because I think I'm not even sure this, if I don't think your brothers have made this video, but like Kuku Khan is in omnipotent city sitting next to Bass, the Panther goddess in Thor love and thunder. Like the God that Namor claims to be no way exists. Like oh. it, it, it cannot be anybody else. Hmm. So we're definitely going to get an interesting conversation. I mean, this movie even started down that road of like Namor's not a God. He's a mutant. Namor. Okay. Whatever. You don't get to start. <laughs> they chose to make the choice. Okay. We're supposed to pronounce the things the way the movie said them. They chose to make the choice. I'm not the person to get into it here. Um, ask one of your Latino friends why they're upset. How about that? There was a fundamental lack of respect uh, shown toward those people. And there was also an extreme respect shown toward them. It's a, it's a, it's a catch 22. I mean, what do you, do you want Everett Ross to say to Chala? If we're expected to say Mbaku, then yes, I want them to say Namor. Yes, absolutely. I don't think we are. In, I think we say Mbaku, but like, that's the thing. Mbaku. Is, <laughs> that's what they're doing though. When they say Namor, that's what they're doing. Yeah. And I don't, I don't think Mbaku cares if I don't say Mbaku. No, but people care. But also, like, it, it is it is the point of like, I don't I'm not getting into this. I'll tell you one thing. This is a peel back. This is take if you start at your hundred points, this loses maybe twenty points. Uh Talukan or whatever the undersea city Atlantis is called. Yeah. Lame as hell. Yeah, this movie wasn't done. Like <laughs> I've seen Wakanda. It sucks, man. Like it, because the first one, the first one I would say has like the best, some of the best CGI world building in the MCU. Yeah. Because like none of that was filmed outdoors for some reason. I don't know why Marvel's allergic to that, but like none of it was filmed on a set. It was, I mean, on it, like a, in a, on location, it was all green screen rooms. It was all fake sets that were, the backgrounds are green screened in and crap like that. Like, and it looked beautiful in the first Black Panther because they gave the artists time to work on it. Yeah. And now they're like, we have to get, they're back to, we have to get a movie out every 15 minutes. Yeah. How do we do that? Well, they're cutting corners in VFX. It, there were definitely. And like this movie was just, was not done. Yeah. No, there was a scene when Riri Williams, not Riri Williams. Um, the Dora Milaje. Oh, what is the leader's name? Okoye. Okoye. There's a scene where she was in her battle suit at the end. And if you watched her, it was like showing the five of them or whatever, all standing sort of side by side yeah. at the top of the ship. And if you just looked at her, she was like, like literally polygons. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, like not even remotely finished. And what? they were all sort of like superimposed on top of each other. So like the, um, the shading and the depth was all wrong. Yeah. No, I, th so I thought the parts of this movie that were supposed to be in this movie, everything that had to do with, the Wakandans, everything that had to do with the Talokan. Like, it was fantastic. It was a great movie. I love Namor. I love Namor. Namor. El Niño Sin Amor. 
Uh, yeah, I love that guy. He's fantastic. One of the best villains we've seen in a long time. The the foot wings could have been better. I get that that's what he looks like. He is the goofiest looking villain in Marvel history. <laughs> if you look at like the original comics, it's like it's like he looks like Will Arnett. Like he's got this huge widow's peak. Yeah, he looks like Mr. Spock from Star Trek. Yeah. With little Hermes wings on his ankles and like an Aquaman like green speedo. Yeah, Namor. Uh yeah. He he shows up a lot. They also um <laughs> They like they photoshopped his junk smaller no. than most of the movie. <laughs> How can you tell? They no, they like they said it. <laughs> Dude, I bet, like, I bet they went to costume design and the people were like, Yeah, hey, we got this. I don't know how concealing it'll be. <laughs> yeah. And like, oh, turns out not very much. They should have just changed it. Like, I get like it doesn't have to look like it doesn't have to look like the comics. We're not beholden to the comic books. I don't know, man. I, this, this, I think this phase four is that we're in phase four has yeah. been very beholden to comic books. Yeah. And, but like, and it's been to its own detriment. Yeah. Cause you gotta remember comic books are like soap operas, man. Like they churn those yeah, bad boys like out. Like they don't all matter. Right. They don't all count. <laughs> like it doesn't, I don't know. I thought this movie was great. I thought that, uh, I eventually got over being annoyed at Letitia Wright. Um, she was phenomenal as Shuri. The whole the story, the writing, like everything that was clearly that what was Ryan Coogler wrote and wasn't just like handed to him mm. to shoehorn in was phenomenal. Be like the way they handled T'Challa. I don't think they could have done better. I really don't. No. Um, I th- if there were so many, so many ways it could have been worse. Dude, the post credit scene. Yeah, that I was, was like, great. This is, this is a gamble, but I'm sobbing. That was great. Um, and that, and that, that thing they did where they show, they finally showed T'Challa at the end and it was like dead silent. And, um, man, I don't think they could have done it better. Like, like, yeah, to, to actually like experience him dying and the funeral, it was a lot more about T'Challa than I really thought it was going to be. Honestly, um, I don't know what I was expecting, but I was not expecting it to lean that heavily on. T'Challa dying and like the grief surrounding that. There's been a lot of grief storylines in the, just the first, you know, couple that come to mind is right. in WandaVision. Like Wanda is going through this whole grief thing. And then there's what, what's the story of Black Widow? Does yeah, Black Widow Black Widow dies. Well, not in the movie, but like movie. we have you have but she's dealing with the guilt yeah. of blowing up the school or something, right? And then you have to deal with Yelena. Right. Um, coming back from the snap and Natasha's died. And then Dr. Strange just wasn't that good. Uh, <laughs> yes, it was <laughs> Peter Parker. It was and better than Eternals. Sir. Oh, eternal slap. Eternal dude. sucks, dude. Oh, that movie sucks. Man, I forgot. You want to talk about Eternals. unfinished visual effects? Oh, Chloe Zhao doesn't need VFX. She just needs a camera and some free time. Chloe Zhao needs to have done a different MCU movie. Chloe Zhao is supposed to be the front runner for the next team up movie. Oh, close you Oh um, yeah. And I'm going to go watch eternal. So love and thunder was bad. It's bad. <laughs> God, I loved Ragnarok so much. Every single Thor love and thunder. I don't even scene. know what we said in that episode, but if we praised it in any way, we were wrong. I have no desire to watch it again. I have no desire to revisit it in any way. I'm sure that I will feel different after they make like love the movie about the girl. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, everything was perfectly set up. Oh, I love this. I love this. Love and Thunder. Simply wonderful. We get to meet Korg's dads, like whatever. Like I'd say one of my favorite things about Love and Thunder was, I don't think a lot of people like this, uh, but it made me feel like a kid watching a Power Rangers movie is when they get all the oh, kids. Oh, rest in peace, the Green Ranger. I know. God, why'd you have to bring God, that up? Because it happened like two days ago. Uh, oh, man. I, in fact, I do want to talk about Power Rangers. But the scene in Thor Love and Thunder when he arms all the kids and gives them Mjolnir. Yeah. I thought that was just so fun. Yeah. I mean, uh, clearly they're setting up a theme here. Of, of like, like passing the, the children torch of the future. And, yeah. Um, but And Yelena Belova. Dude, I keep... So because the Green Ranger passed away the other day, rest in peace... Uh, Jason David Frank. Jason David Frank. Uh, I've been getting a lot of like Power Rangers content on my FYP. Yeah. And now I'm like... 
Dude, I should watch Power Rangers. I should watch Power Rangers. I should watch every episode of Power Rangers ever made. I should go watch that movie with Ivan Ooze. What? They're like I think it was the original like movie where the villain oh. was Ivan Ooze. Have you seen the newest just, like, one? Infects with, people. No, the I newest movie with Dacre Montgomery? No. No, I have not seen a Power Rangers movie in this <laughs> probably in this century. I don't think I have either. But I was thinking I maybe I should have like I should be able to tell people I've seen every episode of the Power Rangers. Like the original run? No, like to today. All of it? Yeah. That, I feel like there's a lot of Power Rangers. There's a bunch, but you should be familiar with like all the different Zords and all the different morphs. And No, I don't think you don't have time for that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you need to do I, that. You know what frustra- would frustrate me is I would get to a point where I know more about Power Rangers than Pokemon, and I'd be like, uh... uh yeah. I haven't seen that much Pokemon either, honestly. No, but I mean like... What at what stage in your life did Pokemon become? I don't know the name of every Pokemon. Um, Diamond and Pearl. Diamond and Pearl. Yeah, I didn't have it. I didn't have a DS. Oh dang. Yep. I, I didn't think, have a DS. I think it was probably black and white for me. Is when I stopped. Which is, I guess, is only one more generation. Uh, yeah. It, it. I don't know what the the actual mm-hmm. time gap was there though. But like Diamond and Pearl feels like middle school, and black and white was college. Yeah. And so, like, I don't know if that was true or not, but uh, I think it was. Because I think there was some remakes in there, too. There was uh, Heart, Gold, Soul, Silver. And I think. I don't think. Omega Ruby wouldn't have happened yet. It was maybe Fire, Red, Leaf, Green. A Fire, Red, Leaf, Green, yeah. Those maybe were, that was those already out. Yeah. No, that, that came before. Game Advance. Yeah. I don't know. But, like, like. I, I I lived a lot between Diamond and Pearl. The thing is, and black like, and white. The, the the gap between and maybe maybe this is again not true, and I'm just it's the weird like stretching of time and stuff. But like, there have been more Pokemon games since. I don't know. How, I don't know how to say what I'm trying to say. Since black and white, but like they feel like they've they're closer together since black and white came out. Yeah, I than agree. they used to be because mm-hmm. like, like Ruby and Sapphire. I was in like fourth grade. Yeah, that was Ruby and Sapphire feels significantly newer to me because I think I I settled in so much to the first two games that when Ruby and Sapphire came out, it was like, this isn't this is a next gen. Oh, Ruby and Sapphire. Sapphire was the one. Ruby was the one I played the most out of all of them ever. A hundred percent. I think that's probably true. I have as well. I still have a cartridge that has like level 100s of all three starters. Dang. I mean, the battery's probably dead, but... I doubt it. They last forever, man. I, there, there was, like, a date where they were, like... I guess it's GBA, but there was a date that passed not too long ago where they were, like, Game Boy card, color cartridges don't work anymore. Um, I mean... Bah. But, yeah, like... But then it's it was, like... I mean, and it's definitely true because like, it was, like, Black 2, White 2... Sword sun, and Shield. Sun, sun moon. moon, Alpha Sun, Alpha Moon, or whatever. Oh, yeah. Um, There was Omega Ruby, Alpha Sapphire... Yeah. Uh, so like after, after re- once they started doing remakes and like doubles, it definitely increased the pace. So what, let's go we, Pikachu. Why are we talking about Pokemon? How did we get here? I don't know, man. I just like Pokemon. I mean, that's uh, I was saying oh, I should watch pa- Power Rangers. Rangers. Yeah. Dacre Montgomery's in the most recent Power Ranger movie. The Ironheart suit looks like a Power Rangers villain or oh. maybe a Power Ranger itself, but like I, a bad one. Man, when they put that suit on, I literally, I like, I feel like there was a part of me that almost stood up. I was like, this looks so it's funny. Cause that, that really bothered you. And then the, uh, the midnight angel really bothered Jay. The, the, um, Oh, suit the Dora Milaje Quay suit. In, yeah. I thought that suit looked like at least thematic and cool. And oh, he hated it. Really? Just its whole existence. Um, I did feel like they didn't need to shoehorn in another hero. Yeah, I was cool with Okoye not being a superhero. Yeah, I was cool with Okoye being like, just... I just hit people. I just hit people really hard yeah. with this vibranium spear. I was sad that... Um, I don't remember what his name is now that he plays, but I was sad that Daniel Kaluuya was not in this movie. Yeah. Um, Okoye, they took Daniel Kaluuya out and then they made Okoye gay. Did they? Yeah, she like kisses a girl at the end. I didn't notice that. Yeah. I mean... Okay. Maybe not gay, but because she had a, a you know a male partner in the last film, so who, at least I, bisexual. Yeah, uh, I don't feel like I can project that. 
But yeah, dude, I did not expect them to lean that heavily on T'Challa, and I'm really glad they did. And I'm really glad they did it well. And now it's just like, it's done. Do you feel like there is a perspective that is uncomfortable with them leaning heavily on T'Challa? Like, I feel like I've seen the argument that like, it makes me uncomfortable that they monetized Chadwick Boseman's death in this way. And I can kind of see that, especially as somebody who like is very familiar with Chadwick Boseman's work outside of the MCU. Yeah. Uh, and knowing that he was more than just the black Panther, but, but like he also wasn't like, not that he was, that he was not more than the black Panther, but like, the Black Panther is a pretty damn cool thing to be. I think the Black Panther was like, it was very important. I think yeah, the Black Panther was bigger in circles Chadwick Boseman. Like I don't know how to describe it. The very concept of the Black Panther and Chadwick Boseman like being the one that gets to represent that, I think he was very proud of. I I did I get mean, the vibe that he was like not the most proud of being a superhero. And like falling into that world of Hollywood. Sure. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I think he was extremely proud of the one that he ended up with, but I almost feel like he, like his agent called him and was like, Hey, Marvel is calling you. Is there, you know, they've got a couple of characters in mind. I mean, and I feel like he called back and was like, if it's not black Panther, I'm not doing it. I'm yeah. not doing it. I mean, there's a lot of people I think that feel that way. There's still, there's plenty of actors that haven't been in the MCU. And, and, and it's, and it's not, I guarantee you it's not because they haven't asked. Oh, for, for sure. One. Like there's a lot of people out there that think they're, they're above it. And there's a lot of people that, you know, filmmakers that think they're above it and any more. You I, might be, I don't honestly think they're wrong. Yeah. Right. Like, um, well, I mean, hold on. Florence Pugh's in the MCU. Sure. I like, but, it, but that works for her, right? Like it doesn't, it, it, <sighs> Yelena, I'm sorry. Florence Pugh didn't have to play Yelena. No, but she did it and she nailed it. Yeah, for sure. Um, but like if you went and saw Little Women and then saw her performance in Black Widow, I think you'd be like, I mean, she's a great actress, but why would she take such a dumb character? But honestly, I'd like, I, I think that Florence Pugh's career has gone in a way and, and she operates in such a way that people don't ask that. Yeah. Like, and I, I think it's the same way about Chadwick Boseman, right? Like, I I don't think anybody ever questioned, especially people that saw Black Panther and saw the impact it made on people. You know, I don't I don't think anybody looked it down on Chadwick Boseman for being a superhero yeah. after that. Do you think you had you had NFL players doing their like intros? You know, they do the the thing where they put them yeah, on the bottom yeah, yeah. screen and it's like Danny Green, I went to Cal. And you'd have like like whatever being like Wakanda tech yeah, and saying stuff like Richard that. Richard Sherman. Yeah. Wakanda tech. Yeah. And it's like the, the, the little ways that, that people felt seen and felt important and felt, I think he, that Chadwick Boseman embodied that idea. I mean, he was Jackie Robinson. Yeah. Right. Like, you know, it's, it's clear the choices <laughs> What Lucas Black was in that movie. <laughs> you're, you're like trying to Justin Long Lucas Black. And it's not working. <laughs> Anytime I see Lucas Black in anything, I'm like, hey, that you're the guy from Tokyo. Tokyo Drift. What do you mean Drift? What do you mean Donkey Kong? You know what DK stands for? Donkey Kong. <laughs> Drift King. Drift King. But like it, it is clear in the roles that Chadwick Boseman plays and took that like that's the kind of person he was trying to be right like he wanted to be that i do think it's a little upsetting that we never got to see a chadwick boseman you know j jonah jameson <laughs> but like so uh, for for starters the sad thing about chadwick boseman there's a lot of sad things about chadwick boseman obviously the fact that he got cancer and died but like not even including Black Panther, like that dude definitely had his best movies ahead of him. Yeah, and hundred percent. <sighs> you know, he's, he's already done some incredible right, stuff. Right, he's like he, he. I look at him the same way I look at Heath Ledger. Yeah, where it's like Heath Ledger did some incredible movies. He put on some incredible performances. We did not see 
the best that he had to offer. I saw a list today that was like counting down top 20 acting performances. It was very subjective. Uh, but their number one was Heath Ledger in the dark Knight. Yeah. Um, it, does that crack top five for you? Top five acting performances yeah. ever. God, that's a big question. <laughs> I, I think, think I've I've seen a lot of movies from the like the era of like like the leading man era where they gave, you know, a specific actor 95 percent of the movie. Right. That like I think a lot of people making that list probably haven't. Um, I can think of I think there's one obvious one. That reaches the top of the list for both of us. So I would put Chadwick Boseman on the list before Heath Ledger, honestly. So, but this is not performer or like Chadwick Boseman and what Ma Rainey. Yeah. That's a good one. hundred percent. Oh, that's good. A hundred percent, man. That I, uh, I can't, I can't think about that. I can't think about Chadwick Boseman without thinking about that yeah. movie. Like I can think about Heath Ledger without thinking about the Joker. Cause the Joker was so all encompassing, but I like think for me, uh, I mean, whiplash. Yeah. Uh, 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 J.K. Simmons. J.K. Simmons. Yeah. Whiplash. Uh, I'm just yeah, trying that to might, think, man. That definitely might be up there. It's top five is a hard, five is a hard number. Uh, this is, I feel like we're just kind of ballparking a top five, you know, maybe in the 95th percentile. Yeah. You know what like, I'm saying? I think about, um, I think about Michael Keaton and Birdman. Oh, that's a good one. Um, I, every time I do this, I try to not think of, Angry white man is angry white man. Of course, I said J.K. Simmons, right? Uh, and then, like, another one that comes to mind is, like, you know, Edward Norton. Well, it's it's not even... I mean, it can be angry white man, for sure. But, like, it's... it's you, you think about any movie where somebody is really just, like, laying it all on the table for you in front of the camera. Yeah. Um, I mean, Florence Pugh in little women would crack that 95th percentile for me. I would agree with that. Yeah. Um, man. So to get back to, to what we were talking about, um, this, I don't, I don't think they unfairly monetized Chadwick Boseman's death. Because they didn't, they didn't use him in marketing at all. They didn't play on it in marketing at all. They didn't release a trailer that was like, we see the funeral for a king or yeah, whatever. They did. No, they didn't. The first trailer was from the funeral. I don't think so. Not, I'm a hundred percent Not to the, this. not, not to the extent that like it felt gross. Oh, the queen died. Yeah. Oh, we forgot to talk about that. I mean, we, we're not done with that. I know, but oh. Yeah. Uh, that that was that was too far for me. As as a person that has lost both my parents in the last five years, that was too far for me. Yeah. That was the point where I was like, sure, he's going to go through this. I'm not. Uh, yeah. She's going to process this And grief. she lost daddy chatty. Yeah. Um, And this is the thing is like, it is, it is. I didn't expect it to play heavily on T'Challa's death. I, after having seen the movie, I don't think they could have done the movie without it because he was somebody that was not, not just that he was somebody that was important to the world and somebody that was important to the story, but he was somebody that was so important to the cast and crew of that movie. Yeah. That like to not give them that opportunity is, would be more unfair. I think than, than monetizing Chadwick Boseman's death. Can you freaking imagine if Lupita Nyong'o came out and was like, have you heard the stories about Ellen? Chadwick was the same way. Just sucked. But like, <laughs> but he, he wasn't. Though. I, I know like, that he wasn't. <laughs> but he wasn't. Right. Because like, because he was a prominent, popular black man in Hollywood. If there was dirt to come from Chadwick Boseman, it would be out. Yeah. This is the thing. Everybody's like, oh man, I'm worried about Lizzo. I'm not worried about Lizzo. If they if there was something to cancel Lizzo over, we would know. 
Yeah. It would have been done. The d- sign and sealed. Like Lizzo's rad. Like, yeah, she's great. I, you know uh, we crazy? should give her more dead presidents, crazy instruments to play. Oh, hundred percent. You know, my thing with Lizzo. <sighs> Do you ever do you ever not like something or come to a realization about yourself in something and realize like maybe the stereotype exists for a reason? Um explain this carefully. Carefully. <laughs> I love Lizzo's existence and I love who she is and what she means to so many people. Yeah. I genuinely do not like her music and not because I think it is bad, but because it does not appeal to me. Yeah, it's fine. I think it's fine. And, and I like, I hear myself say that and I'm like, Oh, maybe her music is not for 30 year old white men. And no. maybe, maybe sometimes I really am a 30 year old white man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, that's totally fine. Um, and there are some, I mean, there's sometimes where a Lizzo song, come on, I'll be bopping along. You know, it's not like, you remember when you were a kid and you were really embarrassed about the fact that you secretly kind of liked country music or rap music or whatever. Not really. Or, or female singers. No, and not one, particularly. I, man, I used to be like this where like, I'd be like, Ooh, I don't want to listen to girl songs. And like the first cut is the deepest would come on and I'd scream at my mom yeah. to change the radio station. Banger. Yeah, right. <laughs> Baby. But, I, but I was, you know, I was a kid and we didn't, I didn't really listen to country music. Like, it wasn't put placed on me when I was growing up. Right. I had to come to it myself. But like by the time I listened to country music, I had ha- already heard, man, I feel like a woman by Shania Twain. Right. Hundreds of times. That was what my mom kept on, on like a CD. Right. So like I, I get- have known at a young age that that was one of the all time bangers. So like women musicians and country musicians never really scared me. For that reason, I think I came around to female country artists faster than I came around to female pop stars. I would probably agree with that. Although I, the way you feel about Lizzo, I still feel about uh, Miranda Lambert. <laughs> I see. Like, I would never think Miranda Lambert to me is not distinct enough to be like, yeah, I don't like this. Um, I mean, yeah, Lizzo's noisy for sure. Like you can't avoid Lizzo. And the thing with Lizzo is like, I don't have any problem with Lizzo's music at all. I probably won't usually put it on, but I also probably won't turn it off. Yeah. Like if you, if you put a new, if, if, you know, if, if a, if I'm on, if I'm just listening to music like ambiently and it comes up on like my Spotify radio, like about damn time or truth hurts or something like that, I'll leave it on, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, those are bangers. But like if one of the new Drake songs comes on, I'm turning that off. Really? hundred percent skipping it. Um, but however, there are Drake songs I would put on. I don't know. Um, Do you know Lizzo's going to be the next Black Panther? <laughs> <laughs> I would love for a scene where Lizzo, where they were like, Lizzo, you need to be the Black Panther. And she's like, ain't no way that damn suit going to fit me. And she's like, we have technology. It fits anyone. <laughs> you talking about that would be really antibody positive <laughs> if the suit didn't fit you like what are you talking about <laughs> that would be a great moment in marvel history <laughs> um uh what was i saying though yeah so i don't think this this unfairly or or grossly monetized chadwick boseman's death i think that this is 100 times better than what Star Wars did with Carrie Fisher. Mm. If they had like deep faked T'Challa onto somebody, I don't know why I said T'Challa. T'Challa, yeah. You got me Namor. thinking about like, Namor, <laughs> T'Challa, the king of Wakanda. Wakanda. I don't think we're in Wakanda how anymore. It, how would they say it in Fargo, North Dakota? I don't think we're in Wakanda anymore. We don't think, Toto, I don't think we're in Wakanda anymore. <laughs> <laughs> the Wizard of Oz would have been way better if Dorothy sounded like she was from like the Midwest, like the North Midwest. Oh, that's where Kansas is, right? Kansas is not North, but also like Judy Garland was, a, you know, a Hollywood star. Hollywood. She sounded like a Hollywood star. She was a Hollywood star. Yeah. Oh, no, Toto. Uh, well, I don't think we're in Kansas anymore. 
if she had just like, oh, Toto, I don't think we're in Kansas anymore. Oh, oof, Shucks. Toto. You know, we ain't we aren't in the old Kansas. We aren't in the old Kansas anymore. We ain't in the where, cities uh, anymore. I tell you that much. They probably don't have walleye here. <laughs> Let's um, see if we can get some wild rice. Yeah, no, this is a hundred times better than what they did with Carrie Fisher. If they had deep fake T'Challa onto somebody, if they fuck, if they were like, or, what or, they did with Carrie Fisher was they made her a Jedi. So if they like, like sure, he goes to take the helmet off and it's T'Challa. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Or even even if they had like like scanned him onto like a person to show us like a dead body. Yeah, that would have been bad. I think what they did was was lovely, and I I don't I didn't expect anything different from Ryan Coogler. You know, there being a new Disney CEO could spell good things for the MCU. I don't think anything's going to change. I don't know, man. Whatsoever. Kevin if, Feige. If you think that, I don't think that, I don't think that Bob Chapek had any control over Kevin Feige. I don't think he had any control I over Kevin I think Kathleen he did Kennedy. early on. I think Kathleen Kennedy came in and they were like, you can do whatever you want, yeah. Kathleen Kennedy. We can't. Star Wars is too big for us to mess with. And, <laughs> and look what they've done. But like, you know what really makes me sad about Star Wars? What? I, I I physically cannot bring myself to watch Andor. And every review I've seen of that show is like, this is the best Star Wars since Star it's Wars. It's like the one I don't, I didn't choose to watch from the beginning. And now everybody's like, oh, I, you know, haven't seen Andor. You're such a fake fan. And I'm like, I've seen all the other ones. You've seen Kenobi? No. Well, I, I started it. It was garbage. You watch Clone Wars? No. <laughs> talking about like actual shows for adults. <laughs> Um, but like I, I, you know, I I watched the book of Boba Fett. I watched every episode. I watched them as they came out, and nobody else did. And now those same people are like, "Well, I'm, you don't watch Andor? I guess you don't like Star Wars." Now I'm busy. I'm busy, and I'm sure Andor it's twelve is, episodes. I'm just waiting till it's over. I'm, I'm sure it's get it in one go. Very good. Yeah, everybody, everybody I've talked to has been like, "Wow, this is fantastic." And I'm like, yeah, it looked fantastic. Cassian Andor was a great character. Y'all were sitting there like, I don't understand why this guy from Rogue One's getting a TV show. And I'm like, I do. I don't even like Rogue One and I understand it. Dude was a badass. I think if you rewatch Rogue One, you'll like it. Yeah. It's Star Wars Vietnam. Star Wars was Vietnam. I, I know. <laughs> That's what makes it so good. <laughs> um... That's a good point. I just don't think they've ever... I don't think they did a good job of giving it stakes. I really don't. You ever watch Star Wars? Yeah. Like the originals? Yeah. Good God, those are good. Yeah. They're also, like, not... <laughs> ah, no, man. I popped that first one in not too long ago. It's, but it's, it's all It's all sauce. It's all X Factor. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, it's not, it's not good acting or writing or effects or anything. It's crazy. It just like works. It's yeah. great sound design. It's great music. When we were kids, it was still thought that the original Star Wars trilogy were ahead of their time effects. They, yeah, that doesn't change. They were but ahead like, of their but time. But they were like ahead of our time. When we were kids? Yeah. No, they didn't. I I pretty distinctly remember before 99, so I would have been very young, but before The Phantom Menace came out, which also pushed the boundaries of what special effects could be. Yeah, absolutely. At the time. Absolutely. 100%. Uh, it just, it has suffered. It has suffered for it. Right. Just like every movie that did during that era. Yeah. <laughs> but I remember seeing Star Wars and thinking this was the same quality sort of effects and, I mean, granted, you know, for a five-year-old, yeah. However much I knew, but it was the same quality as anything else I was watching at the time, which for kids was like Power Rangers, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, Back to the Future. Yeah. Uh, you know, so like it really, I mean, it was on par with all of those things. Um. Yeah. I mean, Back to the Future was already over 10 years old by the time you're watching it. Was by, by the time I watched Back to the Future for the first time, I was- well, it was by the five time, years ago, <laughs> by the time you were alive, it was or, and and like able Cogent. to yeah. By yeah. the time you could you could have object permanence, it was ten years old, right? Like, I think that that conversation stopped when Jurassic Park came out. I think yeah, I think Jurassic Park peaked um, on uh, what can practical effects be? Maybe Spider Man Two. Uh, yeah, the new Mad Max. 
history, right? Yeah, yeah. That that I think, yeah. Um, uh, the, you know, the Batman was really good. Oh, that was a good one. That was a lot of practical effects. Um, and, and we're definitely gotten to the point where like practical effects are the correct way to do it. Even to the point where like they made Star Wars, like it was just better for that reason. Right. Like the, the, the thing about Star Wars, the original Star Wars is like the original Star Wars trilogy effects are not as good as the prequel effects, but they have aged better mm, Yeah, to the point where like you go watch the prequels and the original Star Wars movies look better because the effects in the prequels have aged so poorly. In the, I've been learning a lot about like the advantages of CRT televisions lately. Do you think the prequels would oh, look you, better? Have you been seeing, have you been seeing the guy with the pixel art? Yeah. Oh my God. Do you think the prequels would look better on a CRT? Definitely. hundred yeah. percent. I think that's hundred yeah. percent because, and this is, I mean, this is killing a lot of stuff, right? It's like everything you watch that was made from like 1999 to, you know, 2010 on a, on a modern 4k television looks like dog shit. Except avatar. Even avatar is a little rough now. It's, it's definitely it really, it's starting to show its, it's age. It's starting to show it's a little starting bit. starting to gray Are a little excited bit. For the new one? I can't oh, dude, it wait. looks incredible. It's so good. It looks incredible. Oh, I cannot wait. Like I don't, I don't, I don't even care what it's about. You could show me a three hour silent movie of, of, of that. Yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> of that. It looks beautiful. And the original was beautiful. Was it the greatest movie ever made? No, but it was a feat. It was, it, it, if, if the Phantom Menace pushed boundaries, it destroyed them. Movies that's, would not be where they are today without Avatar. And I honestly don't know if that's a good or bad thing. Jimmy Cameron's it, the guy. Yeah. Um, yeah, like the, the clear answer is that it, it is a healthy mix. The correct answer is a healthy mix of both practical and special effects of both real sets and, uh, green screen. You can't have just one because it makes things very, very hard and you can't have just the other because it makes things look bad immediately. You know what I really love? You know, it's kind of a little sweet, little guilty pleasure for me. What is when you're watching like teenager sitcoms, like Disney channel shows, yeah. like Nickelodeon shows like Drake and Josh. Yeah. And they do an outdoor scene and it is so obviously a very poorly constructed set. Yeah. It's like a stage. Yeah. That, that gives me the, the ASMR tingles. <laughs> I get that. I just think it's so fun. <laughs> but yeah, as, as far as would the prequels look better on a CRT television? I think the answer is unequivocally. Yes. I think about that scene at the end of attack of the clones where they're like, you can see, or maybe not even the end, but like near the end where you've got the whole, like the whole screen is full of clone army uh -huh. and they're just like four polygons a piece. Yeah. And it's like the, the detail is what kills it. Yeah. Cause your TV is trying to add detail to it where it never existed. You know, it's great. The Geonosians are like, just like blurry in HD. Yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> Yeah. And like, you don't have that problem with, with, uh, movies that were, that were shot on film and, and protected because like, you can shoot, you know, like, like a film image to this day is still the highest resolution you could possibly get. Right. You shoot like large format film. That's like your, your eight by 10 negative is like 20,000 megapixels. No way. And your DSLR shooting like, even at this point, like 40. Really? <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's crazy. Like you to, to like DSLR scan, um, which is basically where you take a picture of the negative and then like piece it together and convert it. For like an eight by ten large format negative, you have to you have to scan it like fifty times mm. with a DSLR camera to like get full resolution. Um, so like yeah, the movies that were shot on film still look great on your television because like we still have not reached the K that they can do. Right. Like I would I would love to. It, it's the kind of thing I think about like where if I could if I could have a time machine, but I'm not allowed to change anything. I would just go like watch a movie in like a theater in like the heyday of Technicolor when they were like, you know, real to real projecting, right? Like, you know, film that had never seen a computer that was, that was cut together by hand. 
I would go watch a movie like that. hundred percent. I bet it was an experience. A sex experience. <laughs> um, but yeah, this, the effects in this movie are going to age like milk. Um, <laughs> we're bad in the theater. <laughs> we're bad in the theater. And it's, it's so funny that they chose to go with like, we're going to have blue people that live underwater and, and their underwater city. And then James Cameron was like, you know what comes out next month? My movie about the blue people that live underwater that I've been working on for 10 fucking years. And it's rad. And it looks awesome. You don't want you don't know as Sam Worthington hasn't been in anything. I've had him in jail. Avatar jail filming this movie. But Zoe Saldana, you can have her. Yeah, you can have her. She can be in everything. What? excuse do you think James Gunn, the new head of DC is going to find to paint Zoe Saldana a different color? Any excuse whatsoever. Any, uh, name like who do you a, think she's going to play? Marvin Martian. Nope. That's from Bugs Bunny. Martian Manhunter. Jean. Apparently Jim Carrey is going to be in Deadpool 3. Yes. I know this. I, I read about the character he's playing, but I've forgotten every detail. Every detail. I was hoping you could uh, piggyback on nope, that one. But I can't. I yeah. cannot. The greater Jim Carrey community seems mad about this for some reason. He retired. He came out and said he retired. Okay. So did Mick Jagger. Okay. He's not Mick Jagger. He's Jim Carrey. He retired. He was like, Hey, I'm depressed like Robin Williams and I'm retiring to paint. That's not even why they're mad though. They're mad because apparently he said he was never going to make another comic book movie after kick ass Two. Sonic has comics. You're not gonna. You're not about to make the argument to me that Sonic the Hedgehog is a comic book movie. No, it's for sure a video game movie. Yeah, but, but that's the same fucking thing. I mean, it's not though. <laughs> yes, it is. No, it's not. Chris Pratt's gonna be Mario, and you know what? Yeah, I think and you it- know what? I don't give a flying donkey fart about the lore of Mario. Like the plot of the Mario games. No? I couldn't care. No, not particularly. Especially like the old ones. Oh, yeah, where Peach is the, the yeah. captured. Yeah, no, I don't care. Yeah, like I don't care about the Mario plot. Like the Mario movie. Well, the people are like, is the Mario movie going to be canon? Yes. It's the only thing that exists. <laughs> like yeah. you're talking about games that. that Because <laughs> even the new one, even like Mario Odyssey, they had to like you know, let's try to try to rubber stamp a story on top of extant gameplay. Like there's a way like Mario games work and it doesn't really make for like adventurous storytelling. Oh no, your princess is in another castle. Like I got the new Pokemon game, right? I got Pokemon Scarlet. Oh, that's what I wanted to get. And like at no point am I under the impression that there's going to be some like amazing story that's going to blow my mind. Like a teenager is going to save the world through the power of friendship with Pokemon. That's what happens in every single game. There was one. And even like the, the movies don't follow the plot of the games at all. There was one where like N showed up and there was a giant man. Were those the same game? I think so. Maybe not. N was black and white, I think. And the giant man was X and Y. Forgot about it. They, they, they fall. They, they occupy the same space in my brain. No, like in like the same purpose, I believe. Purpose of what? Like they're, they're, they're like the same character. The giant man. Oh, and you're and saying that, like archetype. They, they do. Play. Yeah. The, the archetype. That's the word I was looking for. Yes. Yeah. They, they fulfill the same role in the Pokemon video game. I do believe that N's father was the, all your base are belong to us guy. And his name was like guests or something. <laughs> yeah. It's exactly what it was. Yeah. It was guests. Yeah. Or Getsis. Something like that. Justice. Maybe if they watch the show, people be like, oh, that's obviously Funch new. And <laughs> we love him. He's the best bad guy in the history of the show. I'm sure. I don't watch the show. <laughs> I just play the games. But like at no point in a Pokemon game does Mewtwo kidnap a bunch of people's Pokemon and turn them to stone and make copies of them. That'd be crazy. But like that movie rips. Mm. It's not good. When Pikachu is blasting the master balls as he's running up the spiral. Yeah, no, that doesn't happen. Yes, it does. Not in not in 
not, not in Pokemon Red. No. <laughs> like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Black Panther 2, Wakanda Forever. Was solid. We'll was see solid. Then. Would, probably will. Yeah. Maybe not in the theater. Yeah, maybe not in the theater. I'll probably watch it again. It was very long. We have to renew that Disney Plus subscription. Okay. D- do something about it. I'm telling the yokes. Okay. <laughs> Let us watch Disney Plus. Patreon.com slash bacon eggs. Check out all the amazing reward tiers. One of them that you select will allow us to renew our Disney Plus subscription. <laughs> You think we won't? We will. I do think we will. You have the card. Uh, no, it's it's. We have to order a new one. <laughs> Why? Oh, that's in a wallet. That's like four wallets ago. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you for listening to this show. We love your faces. That's what Philip DeFranco used to say. Does he still say that? I love your faces. I don't know. I haven't watched the Philip DeFranco show in. Many moons. He used to, this is what he used to say. What's up, you beautiful bastards? Yep. That was that weird song. Hey, you know, you wanted to say. Yeah. Hey, I want to just say. Yeah. Their ability to change the ads in old episodes. Is of, so, of what? Of my bim, of. The Adventure Zone. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was listening to like the first episode of Amnesty and all of a sudden Travis is talking to me about the, the newest Brandon Sanderson book that came out. If you go through seven the, days what, ago, the Alloy of Law. Yeah. Yeah. Or the Lost Metal. Sorry. Alloy of Law is the first in the second yeah. trilogy or the second, I guess, tetralogy of Mistborn. Yeah. Um, yeah. They get them real wrong sometimes, though. Where like they don't correctly drop it in, yeah, in random episodes, and like it'll be the old ad, and then the new ad will interrupt it. Yeah, I watch or I listen to podcasts about Formula One where they don't have an ad break because they like primarily do like it's basically a YouTube video that's then dumped onto a podcatcher, mm-hmm. and they put in like dynamic insert ads that are like fucking jump scares. <laughs> like they'll be in the middle of a word, and an ad will start really loudly. <laughs> And I, I wrote him an email and I was like, guys, this is not a hard thing to fix. This takes 10 seconds. You have people working for you. Like you have a staff. Do something about it. Fix it. Fix it. Anyway, that's been the show this week. Um, this has been our episode on Black Panther 2. I hope you enjoyed it. We enjoyed it. We saw it together. I, yeah, in so we saw Fiatras. it together. Sat right next to each other. Sat with Riley. Yeah. Um. No, I sat with Steven Sinis. You sat with Steven Sinis. I sat next to Riley. Yep. Yeah. And I would lean over to Steven and I would say, oh, that was cool. And he would say, oh, yeah, I like that. Big Steve himself. Yeah. Big Steve's grab bag. See you, I don't know, maybe in a week, maybe in two weeks. Next week's my birthday. See you in another life. See you. Next week is not your birthday. Next Tuesday is not your birthday. <laughs> no, next Thursday is. Yeah. Yeah. That's not why we'd be busy. I just. Oh, Okay. Next Tuesday is, or next Thursday is my birthday. Next Thursday is your birthday, yes, but that doesn't have anything to do with Tuesday. Right, yeah, for sure. Maybe we'll see. I don't know. We love you. We love you. I love you more. Our graphics are by Vaishan, and our music is by Andrew. And we are coming up on an hour right now, so that's Tyler's hard hot time limit. Well, the camera's going to cut off. No, again. I know. I'm, I'm just saying, like, we got to we gotta wrap it up in the next yeah. 45 seconds. Uh uh, Patreon, um, Facebook group, um, uh, Discord, um, Andrew and Vaishan. Watch Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, if it ever comes out. Watch Winnie the Pooh and the Legend of the Hundred Acre Wood. I don't know what that is. Um, watch Christopher Robin. Watch it's these phenomenal. muscles. All right. On that note, bye. Bye.